Welcome to Public Occurrences, Both Foreign and Domestic. I'm your host, Michael O'Fallon. If you've noticed while receiving the news lately, or listening to those in leadership, influencers, politicians, news and media, corporate CEOs and their public relations departments, and even pastors and religious leaders, you will notice that nearly everyone who is advocating for stakeholder economies, diversity, inclusion, and equity, radical environmentalism, and nearly every action that will lead to totalitarian, fascistic, corporatist, Marxist control, is saying the same thing. For instance, not a week goes by that someone on social media or in general conversation will say something to me about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's negative influence on the House of Representatives. Usually what is said is that the ideas that AOC has brought into the House of Representatives has completely radicalized the Democratic Party. My response is always, well, pray for her, because these are not AOC's policy ideas or her plans for totalitarian control. It isn't, but it is, because she is playing along. Those horrible, nation-destroying, liberty-denying, and downright Marxist ideas are from those scripting Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Because Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is the lead actress playing the part of the U.S. representative for New York's 14th Congressional District. And she is simply reading her daily scripts. She is trained to spout off on monologues in the House of Representatives, just like her other Justice Democrats like Ilan Omar, Ayanna Presley, or Rashida Tlaib. They are there in the House of Representatives to carry the message of those that have created the characters that they are to play in a grand theater of national politics. Before these Justice Democrats were elected, their campaigns were accented by the best-produced campaign commercials I personally have ever seen. With beautiful cinematography, seamless post-production, and excellent scripts. Chris Coles revealed most of the alchemy behind AOC and her rise in politics on his YouTube channel, Mr. Reagan. In full disclosure, I had spoken to Chris Coles while we were both in Washington, D.C. around the same time that he had released this information. Behind the daily stage production of AOC, the brand, goes to Washington, Zach Exley. Because Zach Exley is the man behind the creation of the Justice Democrats. And Psycat Shakarbadi, who is presently running New Consensus. And Psycat Shakarbadi was the architect of the Green New Deal, which is perfectly synthesized with Agenda 2030 of the United Nations and the World Economic Forum. These are actually the men behind the character known as Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. These men are scripting Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Now, let me explain what Chris Coles revealed about AOC. And the thing is, really, all of this is in full public view. You just need to know where to look. And that's where Chris Coles has really helped everyone out here. Chris Coles' video on AOC in our show notes is something you should actually check out once you're finished listening to this program. And and here's what Chris Coles said. And some of this bears repeating. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is essentially an actress playing the part of the U.S. representative for New York's 14th Congressional District. In 2016, the Justice Democrats held open auditions for someone to play the role of the candidate for U.S. representatives. That's right, it was a casting call. AOC was working at a restaurant during that time. And AOC's brother Gabriel submitted her for the role in the auditions and nominations. 
And out of 10,000 applicants, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was chosen. AOC got the part. She plays the role. She reads the scripts. And Exley and Shakabardi did this so they could promote the agenda of Open Societies Foundations, the World Economic Forum, and the UN 2030 goals, which is basically worldwide communism along with other fascistic totalitarian elements. AOC is the avatar. The supranationalist neo-Marxists are the actual policies and ideas behind the avatar of AOC. Knowles makes the observation that the people in the 14th Congressional District of New York did not elect AOC. They elected the brand and character of AOC and all of the policies pushed by radicals like Exley and Shakabardi. She is an actress in the midst of a great play, a well-written mass of political drama, delivering her lines flawlessly with that young energy that she has. And in this political scripted play, there is a trajectory, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And that end, for the radicals behind AOC, must happen. Because that is what the script actually says. It has an ending. It's already written. And AOC must follow the script. Similarly to AOC's situation, over the past year and a half, Joe Biden's primary campaign slogan has been Build Back Better. Signs for the campaign were everywhere, and on them, behind him, in front of him, was the slogan Build Better back better. And with Kamala Harris parroting, build back better. And of course, to no one's surprise, this was part of the script. And now the primary message for cutting our own oil production, spending trillions of dollars on things that we can't afford, and crushing the economy is that we must leave the old. The old ways. The old economy the old nation and embrace the new. You see, we must build back better. And the funny thing is, is that at the same time that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are heralding build back better, at the very same time, Prime Minister of the UK, Boris Johnson, is heralding build back better. England's Prince Charles is saying, build back better. Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, is saying, build back better. Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum is saying, build back better. Secretary General of the UN is saying, build back better. French President Emmanuel Macron is saying, build back better. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is saying, build back better. And there are many, many, many others. And of course, this means leaving our status as sovereign nations and moving into a globalist, technocratic, supranational algoocracy, rule by algorithm. But all of the policy decisions, all of the moves, all of the speeches given by Joe Biden are scripted. And I would honestly be surprised if President Biden remembers the name of his dog in the morning. If Joe didn't have a teleprompter he would be completely lost. And we have seen that situation several times in the last few months. Joe is on script. And just like AOC, Joe Biden is a Trojan horse that is now in the gates of our beautiful, shining city on the hill. And who is scripting Joe Biden has a very strategic, well-thought-out plan to deconstruct our entire nation. And in fact, the entire trajectory of this current administration and House of Representatives is completely scripted. They are moving lockstep with one another piece by piece, bit by bit, to, as Democrat Chuck Schumer has said before, quote, transform America. Yep. 
Joe Biden, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Kamala Harris, Nancy Pelosi, and even General Milley, Mitch McConnell, Adam Kinzinger are scripted. And think about this for a moment. Just think of two dates that might be in your mind. November 3rd and January 6th. How it seemed that all the same players just mentioned and the entire media establishment moved and responded in absolute synchronicity on these two dates, almost like they were scripted to ensure that there were massive changes made as the next administration came in. Changes that would make you the enemy, you the terrorist, you the average American who loves our nation and our liberties, who believes in traditional values, that embraces the opportunities of capitalism, that values everyone's privacy and rights, you are now the enemy in the new nation. And everyone from media to corporations to your local government are letting you know that you are the problem. And of course, all of this has been scripted for some time now. Perhaps you have started to notice that everyone is saying the same things. The exact same talking points with very little revision. The same message from everyone all the time. Whether it was every corporation, every politician, every sports team pushing critical race theory, it was the same message coming from everyone. And then they need to make it a movement. Put a black square on your Instagram. Paint a street with that Marxist organization that you're supporting. Start the phrases, no justice, no peace, and repeat them everywhere and in every setting. Call to defund the police, politicians, corporations, and even Google basically running and funding defund the police messaging. All at the same time. From everyone. All scripted. And then there is some place else that this has been happening really over the last 11 years or so. Recently, there was a controversy that erupted over a video that was released showing that newly crowned Southern Baptist Convention President Ed Litton was preaching nearly word for word the exact same sermon as former President J.D. Greer through Romans 1. The internet absolutely erupted. Calls for Ed Litton to resign over his plagiarisms exploded all over the internet. Then which was the Southern Baptist equivalent of the same plane hitting the Second World Trade Center, another video of another sermon with exactly the same problem, Ed Litton preaching the exact same sermon word for word as former President J.D. Greer. The best summation of all that happened in this controversy can be found at Protestia. And the link for that research is on our show notes. It is extremely thorough. And again, full disclosure, yes, I did contribute a little bit of information, not a whole lot, in the final database around that article. And what Protestia brought to light was that former president of the Southern Baptist Convention, J.D. Greer, and the current new president of the SBC, Ed Litton, had many of the entirety of their sermons prepared by an organization named Dawson. So their sermons were exactly the same, word for word. And Dawson is staffed by men and women who prescribe to, shall we say, more of a progressive or postmodern and more critical theory-based interpretation of the scriptures. And what is interesting is that the pastors listed that have accepted Dawson's sermon preparation through the years absolutely fall into the critical race theory championing deconstruct a hierarchy, check your white privilege type of pastor in the SBC. All saying nearly exactly the same thing about systemic oppression, race relations, love thy neighbor or crush thy neighbor, lockdowns, 
all screeching against nationalism, all slowly pushing the church from heteronormativity towards homonormativity. I mean, if you didn't know any better, you would say that the scariest part of what you're viewing with SBC President Lytton and former President Greer is that they are both scripted, just like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, just like Joe Biden, like Russell Moore that made the exact same statement in regards to Beth Moore, if there is no room for Beth Moore, there isn't room for the rest of us. That has been echoed through affinity groups, religious and non-religious, across the nation. The exact same statement. It is a statement from a script. Almost as if they were actors who auditioned for the role and are provided their scripts before the big live show broadcast worldwide across the globe almost as if this was an entire play that has been scripted out and it was important to get someone else in the role of president of the SBC in control of billions of dollars of assets in control of key committee appointments that would continue to play the role faithfully to read the script to ensure that the show must go on as the church is deconstructed gradualistically, bit by bit, month by month, and those that would write those scripts have exponential change in mind. Because season one of the Southern Baptist Convention presidency had just ended with J.D. Greer, and now, recast, was season two, and was about to feature a man that is an ideological clone of J.D. Greer, because they've been saying the same thing, preaching the same thing, word for word, because they are both scripted by the same source. The script has been the same for both Greer and Lytton for years, and those pulling the strings needed someone who would continue to follow the script for Season 2 of the Southern Baptist Convention Presidency in the Great Reset. And then think through the last big event that we had in the SBC, the Southern Baptist Convention. The primary day of voting and of resolutions in the SBC. As someone who has put on massive events for organizations, I can say without a doubt that the day where submitted resolutions were ignored Amendments to resolutions were not heard, where James Merritt gave probably the poorest call for a dialectical approach that I have ever heard, where some people at microphone stations, where a number of us were completely ignored, then gave valuable time to men who literally tried to throw everyone opposed to CRT under the bus and called us right-wing conspiracy nuts, where fallacious and ridiculous attempts at drama and controversy were created around Pastor Mike Stone just prior to the day of voting. Where strong-headed men attempted to stop anyone from filming anything in the hall with even an iPhone or an Android. Well, all of it was clearly scripted. And so what you have is a grand stage where producers and directors have taken the SBC. And just like AOC, and just like the Build Back Better Worldwide Campaign, the Southern Baptist Convention is being scripted by those who are attempting to transition the church into a woke supranationalist supporting standpoint epistemology driven metaphysical organization in line with the new state no different than what's happening with aoc no different than actors playing roles the issue is that normally what conservatives do in response to these sort of things is just react we react to what is happening around us instead of putting in lead measures. Well, we must get ahead of the progressives that have been skillfully planning for years. If all we, the conservatives, do is react, 
then we will always be reacting to something that is historical instead of preventing this sort of insanity that is being unleashed on our church, the nation, and the world. That is why we decided to do this daily program. We will react here, and we will tell you why these things are happening, but then on the causes of things, our deep weekly show. We will give you the deep understanding of what is coming next, how to anticipate it, and how to defeat this subjective tsunami. We've been doing this from the beginning of Sovereign Nations and New Discourses, telling you what the other team's playbook is saying. And I believe that we can do this. If we have the will, the collegiality, and the courage to stand up to this insanity while supporting one another and fighting to reclaim our civilization, we only have one choice. And that choice is that we must win. I'll see you tomorrow on Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. Thank you.